Hello. As you can see, our draft is complete. There have been some high rises and some free fallers. And then there's the big mush in the middle. All this is brought to you by the most interesting man in the world. I don't always drink beer, but if I if I do, I drink Dos Equis Amber. Ah, refreshing. Dos Equis Amber, get it at your local Piggly Wiggly Mart. So, thank you for that advertisement. A lot of surprises in the draft. Obviously, a lot of good players still. Roddy White. Actually, the surprising thing was, at number one, I was almost going to not take Phillip Rivers. Um, I was going to take Roddy White. But then I thought, then my team's going to look a little bit too much like Hugo's, and uh, we all know that Hugo doesn't win anything. So I decided to stay with the formula that has gotten me to the championship two years in a row and in the playoffs all three years. Um, it seems to be working, but um, like usual, I'm going to have different tiers for the teams that I feel that where you're about to finish in the league. Um, I have only three teams in the top tier this year. There's going to be one surprise and another surprise that's not there. Uh, middle team, middle teams, big mush, a lot of things can happen. Um, and then I, I, I actually think there's actually three and maybe four teams in the bottom rung. I'm, I'm still mauling over one of them, but there's at least three teams in the bottom rung. That's why there's only three tiers this league, but uh, this year. Um, but let's start with the top tier, and I'm going to start right off with my surprise team. Everybody's going to be like, oh, no, wow, really? Are you kidding me? Well, this year's surprise team in the top tier that I am guaranteeing stamp of approval going to the playoffs. And that's team... Get some! That's right, team Get Some. I'm incredibly impressed with the draft, and if you actually look at his roster, you're going to be quite impressed with it, too. There's no real downsides except his tight end, Tony Gonzalez. And here's a hint. Watching a lot of Baltimore preseason, their, their tight end, who's replacing Todd Heap, looking pretty good. And you know that uh, Flacco likes to go to the tight end. Now that Todd Heap's not there, who are they going to go to, right? Am I right? Yeah, I'm right. You know I am. So go pick them up. All right. And now you look top and bottom. Tony Romo, Jamal Charles, Tony Romo, he picked up prior to uh, the draft with the trade with uh, Teddy Ballgame. Really, really solidifies his quarterback slot. And, you know, in fantasy, getting that 16 to 22 points from your quarterback consistently every single week is great. So if he stays healthy, I definitely see get some in the playoffs. Um, Jamal Charles, who I definitely think is going to be the number one back this year. Uh, Ryan Grant, this is a big downside for him. Ryan Grant is kind of lost his starting spot in in Green Bay from uh, from the news out there. We'll see if that's actually true. We'll see. He has some good feelings, so that might not be staying as his starter. He might look to trade. Who knows? But uh, Cedric Benson, who I actually really, really like, he usually gets consistently 10 points a game. And for your flex spot, 10 points is incredible. Now, the one problem with Cedric Benson is he did just uh, get jail term um, for 20 days starting his bye week. Um, but with good behavior, he might just miss one game. And maybe not even one game because he's going through a bye week. Um, so if that happens, it's not going to uh, affect him at all. Cedric Benson, really nice, solid player. Now you get to uh, Andre Johnson, obviously, great receiver. Brandon Lloyd, great last year. If Kyle Warren stays all year long, Brandon Lloyd's going to have another good year. If Tebow or, um, uh, what, Brady Quinn comes in, look for the big fall off, but you might be able to trade him by then. Like I said, I think his biggest, weakest point is his tight end, Tony Gonzalez. Looked really, really weak last year. I mean, what happened to Tony Gonzalez? I have no idea, but I only can see him uh, digressing from here. Um, defense kicker, don't care, but he has a solid bench. Brandon Marshall, if Miami could get anybody to throw him the goddamn ball, great receiver. Joseph Adai, everybody always sleeps on Joseph Adai. The man scores points. And on that effective uh, that effective of an offense, going to really, really pan out well. Um, next, you got Eli Manning, always a good fill-in. He catches hot, and when he catches hot, he can be a spot starter in, in, with Tony Romo. 
Uh, I'm definitely thinking week one, uh, he might be going with Tony uh, with Eli Manning instead of Tony Romo, uh, as the Romo is going against the Jets, but I'm going to go through all that in matchups. Um, he also has Cole, don't like that, don't like having three quarterbacks, but maybe he's using it for trade bait, we'll see. Uh, Marion Barber with Chicago, like the pick, especially if Forte gets hurt, but you know, you can't really count on Forte getting hurt, I suppose. I suppose. Um, Second team is last year's champion, uh, Despicable Me, Mr. Micah Dunmar. Again, congratulations on last year. It's not happening again, but congratulations on last year. Uh, you give newcomers like Michael and uh, Ryan Hope. There, I said. Okay. Uh, I said Hope. It, nothing good, though. Um, anyhow, Micah, Rashawn Mendenhall, incredibly solid. He was top 10 running back. I can see him in the top 15 this time. I don't think he's going to be top 10 as, as their passing game is going to speed up a little bit more. you got to remember, Roethlisberger was out for the first four weeks last year, so he got to rock a lot more, um, which really helped his average. So I still think you'll see him in the 10 to 15 range, but that's still great. Um, Arian Foster, I think his arrow is pointing down. Um, not that he's not very, very good running back. He lost his uh, fullback, one of the best fullbacks in the league. Um, and pointing down doesn't necessarily mean bad. just means that he's not going to put up 19 points a game like or almost 20 like he did last year. Still, Adrian Foster, I still think, is a top five running back this year, maybe top seven at the worst. D'Angelo Williams, best news to hear about D'Angelo Williams is he got the big contract. Jonathan Stewart didn't. He's going to get the lion's share of the carries in that split backfield. Good pickup for him. Solid three horses there. Um, Greg Jennings at receiver. Got to love Greg Jennings. Anybody on the Packers, especially number one receiver, Greg Jennings is going to get you points. Des Bryant, nice young receiver. He's going to get you points. Um, we'll see how it works out. He wasn't as a, like explosive as we thought last year, but we'll, we'll see. I definitely can see him still getting that five to six to seven points a game. Um, quarterback, Matt Ryan. Not that high on Matt Ryan. They are still a running team, but when you have Roddy White um, and a not a bad division because it's not. It's a very good division, uh, but defensive-wise, they're still a bottom-tier division. Uh, so an offensive guy like that, not too horrible. Matt Ryan's going to be still middle of the pack, going to get under like 14, 15 points a game. Um, Keenan Willenslow in Tampa, still with that young quarterback. Love Keenan Willenslow as a tight end. Um, he was in the top ten last year in tight ends. He's going to do it again this year. Backup, Beanie Wells. Don't sleep on Beanie Wells, people, especially. I know his draft status went up after uh, the, the, the big uh, injury to their rookie. Still think that Beanie Wells is going to win the number one slot. This just means he's going to run a little bit more. Um, Steve Smith, Carolina, throw him out. Don't like him. Plaxico, good spot starter, um, but he's, how is he going to do later in the season? Throw him out. Uh, Heinz Ward, what is this, 2006? Throw him out. Uh, Kyle Orton, Kyle Orton I like, but Matt Ryan's uh, uh, bye week is later in the year. Is, Matt, is Kyle Orton still going to be starting? We'll see. Uh, Greg Little, whatever, how Lance Kendricks, don't like either of them. Like I said, great starting squad. Hopefully no injuries for Despicable Me and Me, and uh, I definitely think he can challenge to um, keep his championship belt. And uh, the third top tier team, uh, guys, it's me. I'm sorry, it's, it's Wembley. It's Wembley. I've been here. I'm still here. I'm going to be here. You guys know it. Phillip Rivers, top five quarterback. Look forward again. 17, 18, 19 points a game. Solid. Adrian Peterson, top five running back every single year he's been in the league in fantasy. It's going to happen again. Everybody's like, well, he might not be the number one running back. There's always flavors of the year. Every year there's some guy that might take over Adrian Peterson's spot. You can't. He's too damn, goddamn consistent. Okay. Frank Gore, contract year. He might be getting the contract. We'll see about that. I hope he doesn't yet, so he has to fight a little bit more. Um... As a San Francisco fan, I think I want him to, but you know how it is. Um, Frank Gore, if he doesn't get injured, count for him to be out maybe two games. But when he doesn't get injured, I mean, he was a top 20 back last year, and he was out almost half the season. If he's in there and he only missed like two games, he's a top six, top seven running back. It's a big ifs, I know, but we'll see. Uh, Ray Rice. Incredible, okay? Uh, McKay, he's gone. Ricky Williams, oh, Ricky Williams, in. he's not going to give the same exact stuff as him. Uh, Ray Rice also in a contract here. Big blow up. Receivers, Antonio Holmes, Mario Manningham. 
Um, obviously, both of them not marquee. Both of them are going to get some solid points. If you, if uh, Wembley can get about eight, nine, ten points out of them each, look for a big, uh, big year for Wembley. Um, tight end Vernon Davis got to love one of the biggest only threats on the offense. Bradley Edwards is going to help stretch the field with him, so he's not going to get so much attention. Um, Malcolm Floyd, good receiver, it will give him a one-two punch with Rivers on the bench. Julio Jones, we'll see how Julio Jones is. He might be a future keeper, guys. Anyhow, I'm not going to keep going through. You guys can see my roster and tremble in fear. Oh, sorry, Ryan, you're facing me week one. Welcome to the fucking league. Anyhow, guys, stay tuned. See, hopefully your team is in tier two and not in the dreaded tier three. Talk to you later.